Hey guys, good day to you. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to install the Budgie desktop environment on Arch Linux. So if you followed the base installation of Arch Linux in one of my previous tutorials and you want to install the Budgie desktop environment, this is the video for you. Let's get going. So let's get going here. If you followed the previous tutorials about installing the base of Arch Linux and you want to now install the budget desktop environment, we can get going. So let's hit enter here to start the system. And it's going to take a moment here to boot up. And we can log in with our username and the passwords. Now, I know the fonts here are a little bit too small for some of you, so I will increase them. And to do this, I need to install the Terminus font on the system. This is optional for you guys, but if you would like to follow along, you can definitely do so. So we'll install the Terminus font by typing in sudo pacman-syy to refresh also the servers. And the font name is terminus-font. And hit enter. Enter our sudo password and proceed with the installation. And now we can set the font of the console here by typing in set font and then tur for terminus dash and I will choose the 132 points. So 132n and it enter. And so now it's much easier to see. So let's clean up the terminal. Now we need to proceed first by installing our graphics drivers, our display server, display manager, desktop environment and maybe some other tools. So let's go ahead and let's type in sudo pacman dash s. And for the graphic drivers, it depends, of course, on the graphic card you have. So if you have an Intel card, you could install XF86-Video-Intel. If you have an AMD card, you can replace Intel with AMD GPU. And if you have an NVIDIA card, you need to install NVIDIA and also NVIDIA-Utils. And you can install also NVIDIA-Settings. Now, this works for most of the cards. If you have a very old car of NVIDIA from 2010 or earlier, then I suggest you go to the Arch Wiki for the NVIDIA graphic cards. And I'll let, of course, the link to the video description below when it explains you how you can find the card number and the appropriate driver for your card. Now, I have here a virtual machine, so I don't actually need to install these drivers. What I need to install here is the xf86-video-vmware. And now let's go on for the display server. So the display server we need to install is Xwork. And this means the whole group. Now the display manager, it's really up to you. In this case, I'm gonna install a light DM. So I'm gonna type in light DM. And because light DM needs also a greeter, I'm gonna install light DM dash GTK dash greeter. And then we can install our desktop environment which is the budget desktop environment. So we need three packages here. The first one is the budget-desktop. And it's recommended also to install the GNOME group, which provides a more complete desktop experience. And to make changes to the system settings, it's also recommended to install the GNOME-control-center. We could go ahead also and install a browser. In my case, I want to install Chromium. And you could install also an Office Suite if you like to do so. I'm not going to do it just to make the video a little shorter. So I'm just going to hit enter here. And I'm going to accept the defaults for Xorg. And the same also for this group. And also for this one. And for this one. And we can proceed now with the installation by hitting enter. So it's going to take a moment here to download and install the packages. And I'll be back when it's done. So there you go, the packages are now installed, so we can clean up the terminal. And we need to still perform a couple of steps before we reboot the machine. The first one is to enable the display manager, which is like DM in our case. So to enable that, we can type in sudo systemctl enable light DM and hit enter. Okay, this is now done, so we can reboot our machine. So we can type in reboot and hit enter. It's going to take a moment here, the machine to reboot. And it is grub, so let's hit enter here. And it's going to take a few seconds to boot up in LightTM. And here we have the display manager. We can see we have already Budgie up here, which is its icon. We have also the possibility to enter in GNOME because we installed also the GNOME group. But we want to go to Budgie, so we select the first option, enter our password. And now we are in Budgie. So the first thing I'm going to do here, I'm going to change my resolution. So I'm going to right click on the desktop and go to displays. And for the resolution here, I'm going to choose 1080p and click Apply and click Keep this configuration. 
Now, this is the basic install of Budgie, but I want to make this a little nicer. So let me open up here one terminal. And let me increase the font size. So what I want to do, I want to install actually a theme and some icons, just to make it a little bit more elegant. So let's type in sudo pacman s. The theme I want to install is the materia-gtk-theme. And for the icons, I want to install the papyrus dash icon dash theme and let's see we can install also a lock screen which is actually not installed by default in budgie here and i actually want to use the i3 lock lock screen and i'm going to show you in a second how to configure this and then we can just hit enter enter our sudo password and proceed with the installation it's going to take a second here to download and install there you go that was fairly quick so we can close the terminal now let's go to the budgie menu and go to System Tools, and then click Budgie Desktop Settings. So here we can change the look and feel. So under Styles and Widgets, I want to choose Materia Dark. Under Icons, I'm going to choose Papyrus Dark. That looks much better to me. And the other options here, I'm going to leave them as they are. Now for the fonts, we could also change them up here, but I don't need to do this right now. These are the settings for the Raven panel, which is the panel which opens up on the right side of the screen in Budgie. It offers several widgets and controls like this calendar and the volume widget here. And under Windows here, we can change also some behaviors for the windows in Budgie, but I don't need to change this. Now on the top panel, which is referring to this panel up here, we can choose also the applets which are going in there. If you want to remove them, you can just click one and click the trash icon. You can also select the spacer size, or you can also add new applets by clicking on the plus. And you have several choices here that you can explore. In my case, what I want to do is go under settings and change actually the position from top to bottom. This is more similar to the Solus budget desktop, and I like it better actually this way, but this is of course personal taste. Another option that you might find interesting is this dock mode here. When you click on dock mode, the panel becomes basically a dock, which will become longer when you have more and more apps in here. Now, this is of course personal preference, but it's just good to know. Now we can turn this off and close this up. And what I want to do, I want to open up my browser. So I'm going to go here and type in Chromium. And there you go. And here we have our Chromium browser. Now what we can do here to pin programs on the taskbar, we can right click on the icon and click on the star here. And now if we click Chromium, we'll have it always available to us. Now I see here we didn't install actually everything for the audio system. So let me pull up again a terminal. And again, increase the font size and I'll type in sudo pacman dash s. I want to install pulse audio and also alsa dash utils. And hit enter. Enter the password and proceed with the installation. There you go. Now, with the next reboot, audio should be there working for us. Now, I showed you before that we have the i3 lock screen available to us. And that's because there is no lock screen available actually in Budget Desktop. There is a possibility to install the GNOME screen server, which will kick in after a certain amount of time. But if you want to lock the screen yourself, there is not much you can do here. So I install i3 lock and let me put up the terminal one more time. And if I type in, in the terminal here, i3 lock, we get the typical lock screen for i3. So if I begin to type in my password, there is a circle there with the verification and then I'm logged in. Now I want to be able to have a shortcut for this. So let me close this up and right click on the desktop and go to settings. And I'm going to search for keyboard and I go to keyboard shortcuts, go down to the bottom and click the plus button here. And I'm going to give a name. So I call it lock screen. The command is going to be for me, i3 lock. Now, mind you, if you want to actually use an image for the lock screen, you can use the dash i for image parameter and then specify the path to your image, whether it's slash home, slash user, and whatever it is. In that case, when you hit the key combination, the image will come up as a lock screen. Now, in my case, I don't need to do this, so I'll just use i3 lock. And for the shortcut, I'm going to use here control L. And then I'm going to click add. So let's close this up and let's test it. So I'm going to hit control L and it works fine. So I'll enter my password and everything works fine. So this is how you can install the Budgie desktop on Arch Linux. It's a very fast and speedy desktop environment and it's very customizable. It has more customization features than GNOME. 
And I definitely encourage you to explore it and find out the best solution for you, as you can have also as many panels as you wish and as many applets also in the taskbar as you wish. So this is how you can install the budget desktop environment on Arch Linux. It's a very nice DE, it's very flexible and it has a lot of customization options. The only thing you need to be aware of as you've seen in the video is that it doesn't come with a lock screen per se, so you need to install one of your choice and then maybe configure it with a shortcut. I hope you liked the video guys, if you did please hit the like button below and subs to the channel if you haven't already, subs always helps us out. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so by visiting our Patreon website or you can donate via PayPal to our website as well. Thank you so much for watching the video, guys, and I'll see you very soon in the next one.